Hi everyone, am I audible? Can you guys hear me? People on Zoom, people on YouTube, let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Just type a yes. Okay, okay. Hi, hi everyone. Okay, so we've already been delayed uh, by a bit. So what we'll do is we'll jump into what we're going to discuss today right away. So what we're going to discuss today, obviously, is uh, the growth of data protection in the realms of privacy and data protection in our world and what exactly are the work opportunities available in this domain? What is the role of a lawyer in the world of data and privacy? So uh, guys, first, let me ask you a question. Have you heard of the phrase, data is the new oil? Have you heard of these this phrase? Just write yes in the chat box if you have. Data is the new oil. Okay, no response. So uh, maybe you have not heard of this phrase, no worries. So uh, what this phrase essentially alludes to is the importance of oil as a resource in the industrial age. So just as oil was a very an extremely important resource that drove the industrial age a century back. Similarly, data holds a similar amount of importance to today's age, which is the information age. So we've moved from the industrial age to the information age. And just as oil needs to be refined into uh, various things such as fuel, such as gas, such as plastic to be of actual use. Similarly, data too has to be studied, analyzed and broken down to be of actual value. Right. So, and this is the model on which most online businesses are built upon. So all these businesses such as Facebook, such as Google, such as Microsoft, they are built upon the notion of collecting and monetizing data. However, uh, even while this is happening more and more around us today and uh, this debate has been vaulted to the fore of circles, especially in context of the current scandal around WhatsApp's change in privacy policy. However, people are still a bit unconcerned about every single, they are not aware that every single like on social media and every harmless web search is being meticulously recorded to create sort of a digital footprint and a digital footpath that reveals things about you and it reveals things about you in a manner whose intimacy would actually leave you speechless. So, so uh, one might think that social media, search engines, all these are free services, but they're not free services. And actually a major portion of the revenue of these big tech companies uh, like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple a major portion of the revenue is actually dependent upon monetization of data. And that data is actually yours. It's your data. It's not their data. It's information that is pertaining to you. Okay. Urvashi says that I'm not audible. Rakhi, can you hear me? Or uh, you can't hear me either. Yes. So, uh, Urvashi, it might be a problem at your end. Let's continue. And so uh, you might have heard, you, if you're updated with the news, you would know that the Central Bureau of Investigation has recently filed FIRs in the Cambridge Analytica scandal case. And what it essentially was that Facebook data was utilized to manipulate voters by this particular agency. And now criminal litigation is on suing in this regard. So owing to the significant reliance on humans of humans on technology, there is a huge possibility that strangers know who you are. They know where you live. They know who you hang out with and talk to and what to do during the day. So it is, it is a, an extremely frightening prospect that this information might end up in the wrong hands and how this debate, these questions have been elevated to public fora is after, uh, for example, the example that I recently mentioned about the Facebook and WhatsApp uh, policy issue, but it all started when Edward Snowden first blew the whistle on 
uh, NSA's surveillance operations in the USA. So NSA, the National Security Agency in USA, it was collecting information about both the citizens and certain immigrants. And this, this information was uh, collected without their permission, without their knowledge, and it was utilized to create kinds of intelligence in the market. So these are the issues that crop up. These issues lie at the intersection of convenience, risk, monetization of data, and also at the larger crossroads of human rights, ethics, and innovation itself. So, and these, these issues, reports of data leaks, data breaches, and unauthorized monitoring and surveillance, all these reports are increasing day by day. They're not reducing at all. So essentially the next question for us as law students or lawyers, the question that comes up for us is what is the role of a lawyer in this milieu? And what is the role of a lawyer? So first we have to mention the European Union. The European Union has a data protection law called the GDPR in short and the general data protection regulation in full. So this law was enforced in 2018 and uh, through this law, the European Union has actually pioneered data protection regulation across the world. And the GDPR is actually considered to be the gold standard in data protection legislation and a number of jurisdictions across the world, such as Brazil, such as South Africa, such as Singapore, such as India itself, all of these jurisdictions are using the GDPR as sort of a base template to work on and create their own data protection legislations. So uh, right to privacy was recently recognized in India as a fundamental right. Uh, you might already know that. And we are currently moving towards the enactment of a sweeping data protection law. And right now it's uh, pending, uh, pending discussions with a joint parliamentary committee, which has suggested some changes, a uh, few amendments to clauses. And, but it is expected to be enacted this year itself. So these new legislations, this new conception of rights, it requires a new breed of legal practice and legal professionals with a deeper expertise. So one very important factor when we talk about data protection is that knowledge of the law alone is not enough to practice within these new realms. Because when we're talking about data protection, we're, we're simply talking about the addition of a, of, an, of a layer to the existing infrastructure of a business. This layer of cybersecurity, of protecting your consumers and your employer employees' data is something that does require you to have some base knowledge about your clients business models so uh, technical skills such as writing code or uh, are, are not required such technical skills might not be required but you must have a working knowledge of the basics of technology of cyber security and, and of the business model that your client has and this knowledge will help you as a legal practitioner in the field of privacy as it will enable you to identify and manage risk effectively. It will allow you to contribute advisory in a more effective manner. And essentially you will be on the same page as the business that you are helping out. So you need to be aware of the specific business practices and only then can you contribute in an efficient and effective manner to privacy law, the field of privacy law. So uh, before we proceed to why actually uh, an Indian lawyer should learn about GDPR, let me ask you a question. How many of you are aware of the difference between privacy and data protection? So there are the, these are two terms, data protection and privacy. What is the difference between these two terms? Please let me know in the chat box here. And uh, remember that no answer is wrong. Whatever you think about it, whatever your understanding of it is, uh, please let me know in the chat box. What is the difference between privacy and data protection? Okay, Urvashi, you have to connect your audio. Your audio is not connected, I believe. Until your audio is connected, you will not be able to hear anything. So a few people have just recently joined in. So guys, uh, we're discussing what privacy and data protection is. So before we talk about why an Indian lawyer needs to learn about GDPR, uh, does any of you 
know what the difference between privacy and data protection is and you can take guesses you can let me know in the chat box what do you mean by privacy what do you mean by data protection what is the difference between the two anant ashutosh garima kumkum panya rakhi no answer is wrong just let me know in the chat box okay you might not know the difference between privacy and data protection but do you know what privacy is what is privacy what is the right to privacy what do you think what the right to privacy is okay good privacy related to me what about the rest of you the data of customers okay what to do with the data of customers the data itself is not privacy privacy to have control over my data that gets exposed to the world or not yes that's a good answer kartike uh, not to disclose yes ashutosh rai partially correct data of customers should not go in the wrong hands yes good that's a good answer okay so you guys are on the right track so what kartike said uh, privacy to have control over my data that gets exposed to the world or not that is the that is a close answer to what the notion of privacy is privacy at its essence is the right to be left alone it is a notion that i as a user i as a person should have control over what i want others to know about me and that is my right to privacy as opposed to data protection which essentially is a responsibility arising out of the right to privacy so while privacy Uh, the subject of the right to privacy is me an individual the subject of data protection as a responsibility are the companies who have my data so data protection is concerned with the use and governance of data and it talks about safeguarding personal information from unauthorized access use transfer whatever so it is the responsibility of whoever has my data and it is the responsibility of these organizations or persons to establish certain processes or mechanisms by which they respect my choices as far as my privacy is concerned right so privacy is my right and data protection is the responsibility of organizations who have my data to ensure that my privacy rights are given effect so to give you an example if i decide to delete my facebook account that would be an exercise of my right to privacy and once i've chosen to delete my facebook account facebook goes ahead and facebook ensures that that data that my account data is removed from its server that is data protection on the part of facebook so that is the difference between the notions of privacy and data protection always keep this in mind because this will be very helpful for you during practice so privacy and data protection the these are definitely not synonymous terms as we have seen and the presence of one does not guarantee the presence of another both have to go hand in hand towards ensuring security in the world towards ensuring data security in the world so why should an indian lawyer first of all uh, learn about gdpr that is what we talk going to talk about now so first of all uh, the gdpr has huge huge fines so far gd uh, under the gdpr more than 400 companies have been fined and these companies have been fined around a total of around 250 million euros and that is a huge huge amount so the fines that would come into place if uh, you are in violation of the gdpr those fines are huge and the applicability of gdpr itself is very extensive so the gdpr states that if you have any customer that is in the european union if you are providing a product or a service that is available to customers in the european union then you have to comply with the gdpr now that essentially means that the gdpr has an extra territorial scope it is applicable internationally and data regulators data protection authorities in the european union can actually cite gdpr to fine you even if you are here sitting in india but if you are your website or your service is being availed by a european through the internet and that means you will have to comply with gdpr or else you might be fined and the fines are huge 
so that is the essential reason why gdpr is relevant worldwide because it has international scope and applicability the fines are huge so that is the very first reason why you should learn about gdpr the second reason is that apart from the aspect that any company any lawyer would wish to avoid fines and wish to avoid penalties uh, another reason is that adhering to the gdpr gives businesses a significant competitive advantage so uh, not a lot of companies are compliant with the gdpr actually right now uh, according to a recent survey only 33% of the companies that should comply are compliant and of those 33% companies that are compliant 90% of those companies have stated that it has given them a substantial competitive advantage it has boosted employee morale it has led to an increase in their revenue and it has improved customer satisfaction so this is another reason why a person should learn about gdpr and try to bring his or her own business or his or her clients business in adherence to what the data protection law mandates indian lawyers and businesses are especially suited to benefit from this knowledge why because uh, the cost of labor in india is substantially lower than in other countries and the international nature of gdpr and its applicability allows businesses to actually outsource their compliance activities and a number of indian companies such as the big ones such as wipro cognizant and infosys they are already cashing in on this new privacy regime they are doing a lot of compliance work for companies that are based outside india that are multinational corporations and they are making benefit of india's cheap labor and deeper expertise in such technical subjects to get their compliance done at a fraction of a cost so the gdpr presents a great opportunity for indians with tech related expertise to position themselves as leaders in providing privacy services and data protection services and solutions and as i mentioned a number of indian companies are already doing that work and this does not mean that smaller indian companies who only have a few european clients or you do, or who do not have an international scope will skate under the radar because if, even if a simple payment gateway is used inside the european union say a phone pay or a paytm or a razer pay is used by a european resident or even an e-commerce portal say someone orders something using flipkart or mintra so all these companies will need to comply with gdpr they will need to rework all their policies all their terms conditions and practices to reflect the requirements posed by the gdpr so and there are other industries that that are impacted by this as well since a european citizen is protected by the gdpr wherever the citizen might travel the fallout the applicability is not limited to tech companies or to online businesses alone even banks uh business processes business processes outsourcing industries the airlines industry the hotelier and tourism industry all of these must be on the lookout for complying with the regulation they are on the clock and they must comply with the regulation and we have already seen that enforcement under gdpr is quite quite massive the data protection regulators are very active and they are not hesitating in inflicting substantial fines on the companies who violate the gdpr so this these are the reasons why a lawyer in india may gear towards learning gdpr because of the substantial opportunities it holds and over a over the course of many conversations that i've had with various other lawyers and even in house counsels working with companies so what most of them in the tech field feel is that the work around data protection and regulation is going to be the big thing at least for the next couple of decades and because it is still growing it is still it is yet to achieve maturity and all of the major work around it is still pending as i said only 33% of companies are according to the survey only 33% companies are compliant with gdpr so a lot still remains to be done now we come to what the 
actual topic for today is right so uh, what is the role of a lawyer what is a work opportunity for a lawyer in the field of data protection so uh, like we've discussed the privacy landscape in india is quite wide it is expanding and there is a lot of scope for a professional to specialize however the notions that i mentioned the notions of privacy and data protection when we think about them in the context of practical application they acquire different dimensions so for example the application of the privacy right in the cloud computing industry will be different from the application of the privacy right in an industry of banking and lending or tourism or healthcare so every industry will have a slightly customized application of privacy and data protection which is why as i mentioned in the beginning it is also important to have a certain modicum of knowledge about the business model that you are actually representing so if uh, if you as a lawyer or a law student if you already have knowledge or interest in a particular business domain it would be a tactical decision it would be a more beneficial decision for you to add a layer of privacy knowledge and data protection knowledge to top off your existing knowledge and interest so as such uh, even even so if we're talking about in a general sense so there are a number of roles that a lawyer can fulfill in this backdrop okay and i'm going to talk about a few of those roles now so the very first role that a lawyer can take up is that of a privacy attorney right so what what do i mean by this term a privacy attorney so by privacy attorney i mean it to include both litigating as well as non litigating lawyers so data protection legislations both the gdpr in eu and the pdp bill when it is enacted in india data protection legislations they prescribe penalties and sanctions on organizations for non compliance and individuals whose rights are violated individuals have been vested with the right to initiate proceedings against them so any lawyer who is working either in house or at a law firm these lawyers will be expected to provide opinions and informed advisories on the practical implementation of privacy regulation and data protection at the same time those who are litigating will have to battle it out with data regulators supervisory authorities in the courts so being a privacy attorney has work that is related to advisory if you are uh, a counsel in a, at an in house firm at a firm or in an in house department and there is work related to litigation as well so the first role a lawyer can take up is that of a privacy attorney and we have seen that firms like ikigai law and spice root legal they are entirely built up on this niche of technology law and uh, one interesting fact i would like to share with you is that the uh, ranking firm that legal 500 the research firm that ranks law firms in india this year for the first time it has recognized data protection as a completely separate practice earlier it was clubbed under the technology head and the only vertical that was spoken of was the tmt vertical technology media and telecommunications but this year it has been hived off into a separate vertical itself and firms like ikigai law spice root legal they are already carving out a sizable market share and name for themselves in this particular vertical also the legal teams like i mentioned at wipro infosys cognizant tcs they are also already cashing in on such roles of the role of a privacy attorney so that is the first kind of role that a lawyer can fulfill in this regard the second role uh, that a lawyer can fulfill is that of a compliance professional so data protection and privacy regulation mandates all these organizations and businesses to appoint people who take charge of ensuring compliances so the second role is that of a compliance professional 
so you have to essentially appoint certain officers certain managerial positions within your organization and business who would be responsible for overseeing organizational behavior and processes with respect to handling of data such as the gdpr mandates the appointment of a data protection officer and such personnel would be responsible for ensuring that whatever behavior whatever processes whatever activities that the organization that the business performs with respect to user and employee data all these behaviors and processes should comply with the gdpr or comply with whichever data protection regulation is applicable to that business and so this is another niche another role that a lawyer can fulfill that of a compliance professional and especially in house lawyers those who are already working in in house teams they would be exceptionally suited to this role since they already have a handle of how their organization functions they already know what the organizational behaviors and processes are and they would simply have to bring those in line with the requirements of the gdpr or the pdp as applicable so a compliance professional is the second kind of role that a lawyer can fulfill with respect to privacy and data protection law the third kind of role that a lawyer can fulfill is would be it would be industry specific in general it cannot be a generalized role it would be an industry specific role uh, because as as i discussed before the interaction of existing industries with privacy and data protection is set to grow it is already growing and independent lawyers who already have a portfolio of clients with uh, certain kinds of businesses would do well it would be in their best interest to study how these new tenets of law these new regulations apply in the specific context of their clients business areas for example if we talk about banks if we talk about fintech there are separate data protection regulations uh given out by the rbi also even when the pdp bill comes in when the if when it becomes an act so we still have the rbi's data protection directives at play so the role you the role that an independent lawyer can take up can be quite industry specific in general especially if you already have a portfolio of clients with certain kinds of businesses so learning how data protection laws apply in the specific context of your clients business areas will enable you to provide bespoke uh, bespoke services in those domains you will be able to build a specialization as a data lawyer in so and so field in the fintech field in the e-commerce field and all those clients would then scurry towards you so the third role that a lawyer can take up is an industry specific role an industry specific specialization the fourth role that a lawyer can take up would be that of a policy advisor or analyst for that matter policy advisory and analyst because uh, so what is happening is that the domain of data protection the domain of privacy is still growing in few jurisdictions such as the european union it has already matured into a comprehensive law in a comprehensive regime but in a number of jurisdictions the scope is still growing it is still in its nascent stages the law has not passed such as in india itself and discussions among sectors are still going on so it is clear uh, that unfettered technological growth raises a number of misgivings however such technological growth these misgivings in specific can be addressed by anchoring this growth to effective policies and effective policies in consequence can only be developed by a proficient team so in this context lawyers have a massive opportunity to work for and with the government so in india if you're talking about india the national bar association has actually created a privacy and data protection team with the objective of supporting the government in policy initiatives around data and privacy excuse me so the work around policy advisory and policy analysis is very real and it is not going to be extinguished anytime soon because the field is still growing in india lawyers can so we have all these white papers and discussion papers that are released by the government so lawyers can strive to contribute recommendations can strive to contribute their comments when these drafts are released for public consultation 
or they can issue briefs that can stimulate debate something these are things which firms like nishit desai like tri legal like hitan and company are doing a lot and even in house lawyers can indulge in this and they can actually use this as an avenue to lobby policy that is favorable for their firms and lobbying is a viable alternative right now in the field of data protection and policy and in this context however you do need to be aware of what data law state what the precepts of data protection are so you can even work with think tanks like uh, vidhi like bridge media and you can move towards ensuring the sustenance of a rights based discourse so that is the fourth rule that a lawyer can take up which is that of of a policy advisor and that of a policy analyst the fifth role that and this is largely the final broad role that i will be speaking about today is that of a fellow and legal researcher as i said uh, this body of law this body of this regime is still developing it is still in its nascent stages and therefore there is a lot of scope for people to contribute it both uh, academically as well as practically so publishing academic papers collaborating with a research institute earning a fellowship it is a veritable way of contributing to a growing body of much needed knowledge there is a lot of uh, lot of mishap mishaps happening in this field a uh, lot of awareness is missing that must be there and that is a gap that you can fill you can become a scholar you can become a fellow you can become a legal researcher so actually one of my friends that i uh, one of my friends uh, recently got appointed as a legal fellow with an institute that is based in denmark and that institute it is called the future of free speech it is associated with other entities such as uh, the columbia law school and the global freedom of expression movement and he is doing well he is meeting new people he is getting to learn new areas of law and he is contributing to the academics so as in this role you could track legislations you could provide real time updates to both organize specific organizations as well as the public and you can have you can actually build this role actually to become kind of an advisor to multinational corporations on how global privacy law can impact their operations because the maximum work under Uh, privacy law will be with respect to multinational corporations because every jurisdiction will have a different regime for data protection and they will need help to navigate it and that help they can get from the domestic people in each of those jurisdictions so lawyers in these areas they can also get into tech journalism so like media nama media nama is an entirely tech focused journalistic endeavor so they can also get into tech journalism they can get into awareness projects so even big firms like shardul lamarchand mangaldas like siril lamarchand mangaldas they have set up teams of research scholars i have a batchmate who is actually appointed as a research scholar with shardul lamarchand mangaldas and working in this field and these teams these new age teams are entirely and this is different from a typical knowledge management team let me tell you and these teams are typically filled up with such research scholars and lawyers that are having such academic oriented profiles so these are the few roles the five broad roles that a lawyer can fulfill in these in the domain of data protection and policy so what actually is the work that you will be doing the work actually that will happen will largely relate to as i mentioned and this is a direct inference from the rules i've discussed with you and i've already informed this to you uh, the the work that will come up with be with respect to compliance of course compliance dealing with regulators in each jurisdiction and uh, uh the other other work that will come up uh, it will largely be related to contract drafting contract drafting will form a large portion of your work you will have to ensure the drafting of various terms and conditions various policies platform conditions data processing contracts all of these should be in line with what the law requires you to do for that you'll have to study the law and use it 
to co- draft your contracts accordingly you will have to learn how to obtain specific and explicit consent that is a big debate in privacy circles right now drafting privacy notices drafting data processing agreements classification as a data controller or a data processor or a data fiduciary mapping of their obligations segregation of data identifying appropriate lawful basis for the processing of data conducting data protection impact assessments conducting risk assessments then implementing breach notification procedures in case any data breach is done how to notify the persons who are affected so these are the practical tenets of work that you will be finding in the five roles that i discussed with you today so guys uh these this this is mostly what we had to discuss today and i know that it seems a bit scary to uh, learn about so many new developments so many new terms in just uh, one go and but you should remember that all of this information that i've discussed with you and if you want to learn about gdpr or data protection in general or gdpr in specific all of this information all of these documents are available in the public domain you can actually uh, go through the internet you can conduct deep deep research as i have and then you can find all this information you can learn all this work by yourself however if you feel uh, that you need some guidance to go about to go about this you can log on to lawseco.com and you can request one of our counselors to call you and our counselor will call you and uh, they will guide you on the choice of your career they will talk to you about how you can build your skills in the career that you are interested in so all of this uh, we can make it happen and lawseco.com is the website you should go to just drop your details there you will see a tab which says request call back and you can leave your details there and one of our counselors will call you and you can have a look at uh, the cyber laws course on the same website the cyber laws course actually uh, covers everything that i have discussed with you today it discuss it covers all aspects of the work that i have shared today and we actually teach our students through practical exercises to perform those kinds of work so Uh, do have a look at the syllabus at the exercise or have our counselors call you and do you have any questions for me now put them in the question and answer box is there a question and answer box no there isn't just put them in the chat box and i'll answer your questions it does no okay anand has a question does this field require or help any certification for iapp so what uh iapp certification it is not a mandatory requirement but it is an additional some organizations may require you to have a certification uh, but it is not a legal requirement and it will help you if you are not already conversed with the laws of that particular region so the cipp uh, is the primary certification offered by iap and cipp is of different jurisdictions but if you are already because the laws and the work in those jurisdictions uh, this certification is not going to help a lot it is like a badge you can have the skills and not the badge and some organizations do take that into account but most don't does that answer your question anant okay guys does anyone else have any questions you can ask me anything you want regarding data protection even regarding technology laws actually okay kartika has a question how much hindrance does a student from a non technical background have to face if starting from scratch not a lot of uh, hindrance you will face there are few technology law basics that you will have to learn but it's not a big hindrance i i am from a non science background i don't have a technical background i had commerce till class 12 after that i did a ba llb from nlu punjab and i was able to adapt to this quite easily so i don't think it would be much of a hindrance 
any time any time so panya has a question uh, what are the ways in which lawyers can ensure data protection since we would be dealing with sensitive information so the lawyers would be bound by the same laws and regulations that you would be helping your clients or employers with so once you have knowledge of those laws and regulations and you would be helping your clients and businesses implement those you would have to implement those requirements within your organization within your practice as well so that is how lawyers would deal with sensitive information anyway the information that a client or uh, that a client shares with lawyer is protected by privilege and it is not it cannot be divulged anywhere or lawyers are held liable so that is another aspect in this context any more questions guys you have any questions for me any doubts that you have feel free to ask me can you tell me okay i'll just ask you one thing can you tell me oh, let me go to youtube and check if there are any questions where can we intern arshad khan okay there are a number of places you can intern you can intern with firms that have a good data practice such as tri legal such as khetan uh such as ikigai law such as spice root legal you can also intern with in house councils and in house teams uh, in these tech firms such as wipro infosys tcs cognizant all of these are places where you should be looking to intern so guys i have just one question from from, uh, from you uh, did you find this session informative and what is your i'm just getting some feedback put your feedback in the chat box you can either describe what your thoughts are about the session or you can simply rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 how did you find this session on a scale of 1 to 10 put in the chat box and looking for honest feedback abdul anand kartike minal panya rakhi rashmi resham sucharita awesome 8 on 10 what about the rest of you thanks guys so guys uh, uh, if you want to discuss anything else if you want to if you want to discuss anything if you want to talk about anything you can connect with me on linkedin or as i mentioned you can go to our website you can drop your details there and our counselors will call you so our counselors will call you and guide you and that is it uh, what for what we had to discuss today so thank you guys for attending the session and thank you for the honest feedback bye guys i hope you